We all know vintage is always better than new, right? Well, today, the folks at Xpandora make me question everything I thought I knew. Have you ever looked at all the gear musicians use and wonder, how does it all work? My name's Dustin and my family and I are setting out on a quest to inspire both adult and kid musicians to create new sounds together and learn all about what it takes to produce great music. We'd like to invite you along on the journey as we explore the gear professional studios, musicians, and hobbyists use to create their art. We'll take a close-up look at the gear and ask, What's this button do? Hello and welcome to this week's episode of What's This Button Do? I'm your host, Dustin. Today, we are going to be doing a deep dive on one of my favorite pedals of all time, the old Bixonic Expandora. This was one of the most crazy, drive, fuzz, grit-inducing pedals that came out, oh gosh, I think it was back in the 90s. Uh, a company in Japan made them, and they were absolutely flipping amazing. They they had kind of a regular overdrive mode that was still kind of grittier and leaning toward fuzz, and you guys know how much I love fuzz. But then it had these little dip switches on the inside. You can kind of see them there. Kind of hard to, to see them all, but there's these little dip switches right up here. And you could change those around to dial in all sorts of different crazy tones in the fuzz and, and make it stand out and get fuzzy or gnarlier or pull it back and turn it into more of an overdrive. It was such a cool pedal. Recently, I found out that a new company has uh, purchased the rights to the Xpandora name and they are obsessed with the original Xpandora pedal. So they wanted to bring it back and do justice to the pedal. And I got to meet them at NAMM and pick this little bad boy up. And I've got to tell you, so far from being a huge fan of the Xpandora, I really did not want to love this. I, I was like, that's cool that they're bringing it back, but you know, the originals aren't super expensive. Like I, I should just get an original. I'm gonna stick with the original. But after playing with this for a little bit, I gotta say, I, it's one of the few times that I actually think Modern might have a point. So let's hop over to the pedal board. I'm gonna let you hear some sounds, play around with it a little bit, and then we'll come back and dig into our conclusions. All right, everyone, for today's demo, we're gonna be using the Kurt Shane Harley Davidson guitar. This thing is an absolute beast. Got uh, Lawler Powertrons in the uh, bridge pickup. That's where we're gonna be kind of living today is in that bridge pickup sound because this is a gain monster. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at an original Xpandora and we're going to take a look at the new reissue model that has come out. Now, uh, I met with the Xpandora team in NAMM a couple weeks ago. Fascinating to see what they've done. They have rebuilt the Xpandora from the ground up and what they're doing is creating new models using different chipsets and they've made them swappable so that you can pull out old chips. If you've got some old vintage chips or you find some on the internet, you can swap them in, try them out, see how they work and see how they sound. It's a really, really cool idea, especially for people who are geeky over pedals and like to tweak things a little bit, but you don't have to. The cool thing is, is they've got a ton of different options. When you order these, you can kind of pick them. They default to what's called an OP07 uh, op amp. Now these are very close to the old original uh, Russian LM308s that have been around for a long, long time. Problem is, is the old Russian ones were so inconsistent. You, that's why you could buy Xpandora's three different ones and they'd all sound just a little bit different. There just wasn't a lot of consistency. And even nowadays, the few of them that are left out there, most of them are trash pieces. They just don't sound that good. So it's really hard to find consistent production on an old LM308. So they started using these OPO7s, which is what you find in like a rap pedal and in some of the more modern distortion pedals. Um, now these sound amazing, they sound really good, but I wanted this demo to be more accurate. So I picked an, up an actual Russian LM308. This has uh, Russian L LM308 op amps in it. So we're gonna compare the new versus the original so you can kind of hear it and hear how it sounds. I'm gonna start with the original because I've, I've noticed a couple things just right out the box. What you're gonna find is on an original Expandora pedal, these were distortion monsters. They could do overdrive, they could do distortion, they could do fuzz, just depending on how you set them up. And what's really cool, I wanna show you the inside of this because I've got the back turned off. You'll notice the gain, there, the knob system is a little different. It's gain, tone, level. Here they reversed it, it's level, gain, or level, tone, and gain. So these are a little bit backwards. But what you'll notice is when I flip the pedal over, 
Inside of here, you have these two dip switches down here. Those two dip switches would change how the pedal behaved and what kind of distortion level you were getting out of it. And there was a little chart on the back of the, of the pedal and it would show you, hey, set the dip switches like this. If you wanted to have the distortion mode off, you would turn number one off and turn number two on. If you wanted it to be more of an overdrive with a little less distortion, you would flip those settings. And if you wanted it to be just the crunch, which was kind of the default tone, you would just set both of those off and it gave you kind of a cool in-between overdrive, crunchy sound. Now, there was one thing that they didn't list on here. If you turned both of those on, you got what was called the forbidden fuzz mode, which was this overloaded fuzz sound that kind of self-gated and, and got this really cool sound. We're gonna mess with that too because I think it's a really, really neat sound. But I'm gonna walk you through these and we'll compare each one of them so you can kind of see how these sound because I'm so blown away with the new ones. I, I want you to hear that and, and hear for yourself. So let's start. I've got both of these set up in just stock position, kind of in crunch mode. So let's turn on the original now. Sorry, I knocked the thing loose. Also, the old ones, kind of a pain in the butt with power supplies. They were very, very finicky. So we're gonna turn that on. I'm gonna turn up the volume on my guitar. Instantly, you can hear just a little bit of hum, but really not too terribly bad for as much distortion was on tap on these. It really didn't overload your amplifiers, but it's just a beautiful crunchy sound. Now I've got the knobs pretty much set right in the middle here. I'm gonna turn them up. When we go over to the new version, you'll hear. Right away, you can tell there's a little bit more volume in the new version. There's a little bit more oomph to it. Very similar sound and very similar compression. But to get the two tones really similar, you kind of have to take the gain up a little bit and the volume up quite a bit on here on the level side of things. And then we'll get really close. But you'll notice that the new Expandora has a little bit more clarity to it. I I will put that up probably to the chipset being a newer chipset and just the newer build quality a little bit nicer. But right off the bat, you can hear that. There's already a clarity and a beauty here that is just absolutely gorgeous that can still get gritty and still get real grimy and fuzzy if you want it to. But I absolutely love that. If we take the level down a little bit, we can get a pretty close approximation. <laughs> See there, we're real close on there. Very, very close. So the original sounds, the original crunch sounds that you can get out of the X Bandora are definitely there in the new model. They're just a little bit clearer. And like I said, I've got the level almost maxed out here. I'm barely scratching the surface of the level. So on the new one, if you really want to take that up, you can really give it some bite. See how much grit's in there? And if I bring the tone up, just goes beyond, well above and beyond what the original can do. So the new one really can push it into a whole other level there. I'm really impressed by that. Now on the originals, let's go back here for a second. I'm just gonna show you the controls on here. If we have the gain all the way down on the original and we have the volume kind of turned up, on the original, what you would get, bring this up, you gotta get it, it's active there. Versus. Here, there was actually a volume drop in there. When we bring the, vo the volume level up just a little bit, I mean the gain level up just a little bit. There was very little clean. There was that initial when you turn the volume on and it drops your sound, it's clean. The second you start engaging the volume or the uh, gain on the original pedal, you definitely started to get some distortion. There wasn't a lot of cleanliness here. Even at this level, if I turn down the volume on my guitar a little bit. That was about the cleanest you were gonna get it, and there's still a little grit around those edges. The second you get up around here. There was 
there's definitely an overdrive sound to that. Now, on the new one, if we do the same thing, if we take our level back a little bit and we take our gain like way back here, you notice very, very similar style. Even when I come back to here and I bring the volume back a little, that's about where you hit the cleanup point there. And if I bring the volume up on my guitar, so you can clean it up just a little bit more, but it's really, that's not what this pedal is meant for. It was never about a clean drive. It, this was used as an overdrive, as a crunch, and as a really thick tone. So that's your basic entry level. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna engage the first dip switch on here. And then I want you to hear what this is gonna sound like. So let's engage the first dip switch on here. Let's give it a little bit more gain. We're gonna bring the gain volume up and the tone about right there. Let's hear what that sounds like. See a really, really nice crunchy sound. Doing the same thing over here, if we bring these up, kind of keep it around the same level. Here, the modern one has a little bit more fuzz around the edges. It just gets a little grittier, a little dirtier, which I absolutely love. But again, I think part of that is because it's got a volume boost there. If we bring our volume back. Very similar to what it's gonna be doing there. So you can get that by just compensating with the volume. But that extra gain on tap, that's just a beautiful, beautiful thing on these new Expandoras. I absolutely love that. Now, if we were to engage the opposite direction, so if we flip our dip switches around and we come back the other way, this is a little bit different mode now. Now we're into more of that overdrive mode, so let's turn the gain down just a little bit. We'll kind of come back to the middle position. I'm gonna turn this down and keep these all at that middle position, let you hear what that sounds like. Right away, you'll notice that took some of the dirt off of the edges and it gave it more of that. Kind of that Billy Gibbons drive, that ZZ Top kind of sound to it. Same thing here, if we go over here. Kind of got an overdrive sound to it, which I like. Not near as fuzzy, not near as distortion-like, but it's just a really smooth, kind of cool, killer overdrive. And for lead tones, that can be really, really fun. The reason that I love the Expandora so much, you can hear that when you hold a note, it's almost like that note is blooming into this new feel. Absolutely love the way an Expandora sounds for lead lines. It keeps those notes just blossoming and vibrating there at the end. There's something so gritty and so cool about that that I've just always been in love. But the super secret setting, and this is gonna get a little loud, we're gonna take this into the forbidden fuzz realm. And to do this, I am gonna turn the gain down and the level down on all of these pedals here because I don't wanna blow your eardrums out. But the way that the forbidden fuzz mode worked was when you engaged both of these circuits at the exact same time, what would happen is you would create this overload of fuzz and the neat part and the real trick, and this is what a lot of classic rockers would do before the gated fuzz was really a thing. And you guys know I love me a gated fuzz. We've talked about this several times. Listen to what happens if I've got my gain all the way up, you're gonna have this like. But notice, it's not, see that? You have to give it some sound. It kinda does this gate sound and then it comes back on. So it like 
pulls back down the notes that you're playing. So if you keep ahead of that gate and keep playing before it opens back up again, you can get this really gnarly sound. <laughs> still hold a note. If you vibro with that note, as long as you keep motion going, it will not gate before you do that. But then watch what happens if I turn the gain down on these originals while it's in that forbidden fuzz mode. This is the true kind of starved, fun, gated fuzz. Got to get it just up enough where it starts to engage. There we go. Notice when I stop playing, the gate shuts everything down. Such a cool gated fuzz sound from a pedal that was really more of an overdrive. This really was like an evolution of killer fuzz. And when you get up a little higher and I turn that gain up a little bit. Just a really, really killer sound. But let's listen to the new version of that. I'm gonna bring this up, I'm gonna bring my volume up, I'm gonna bring that gate right to the edge. Give it a little more fuzz to it. Oop, gotta, didn't even have it in the right mode there. Now we switch those both on, now watch what happens. Again, palm mute, shuts everything down. Bring it down just a little bit here to the edge of that gate. Absolutely gnarly kind of Arctic Monkeys kind of fail to it. Like it just has that killer gnarly fuzz. I could see Jack White using that. I could see a lot of artists that want that thicker, heavier, bassier, riffy fuzz, but they don't want it to go over the top and overload their amps. That's where this is really beautiful. And if I roll down the volume on my guitar just a little bit like that, you'll notice the distortion went down a lot. But the level of the fuzz does not. So you can clean up the edges of that fuzz and still be able to get that grimy gated sound. The more you bring your volume down, the more that gate's going to react in a weird sputtery way. See how it kind of like grimes off there? You need a little bit of volume to really catch that gate. Now, what happens if we turn the gain quite up quite a bit? You'll notice the big difference here is when I did that before, the gate kind of reopened. See how it's got that dirtier, grimier sound when I palm mute? So the newer version really does clean up a little bit better, give it a little bit more boost, a little bit better sound, and works really great in all four modes. That's the cool part of it. Where the original was real finicky, you could dial in some amazing tones in all four modes, but the full knob range really wasn't accessible. Once you got up into these higher realms, really past about the one or two o'clock on the originals, you could really overload them and cause some sounds that you may not have wanted. So I think that's the real beauty of the new version. You can just tweak that to as far and grimy of a fuzz as you want and pull it back to as light of a fuzz as you want. So we're in the grimiest mode here. Let's turn the volume up, this up. Now last but
but not least, I want to show you something, and this is similar on both pedals, so I'll just do it on the new one. If I go back into the regular mode, I want you to see the tone sweep on here, because this is the other thing that I think is really impressive. If you've got a darker guitar um, that needs a little help, maybe the pickups are real dark on you, and you want to cut through the mix a little bit, a lot of times when you're playing a fuzz pedal especially, like a Big Muff, for instance. Big Muffs sound amazing on their own. Absolutely gorgeous. When you're sitting here in a room and you're playing a Big Muff, there is nothing better. It is the most awesome, powerful feeling you'll ever feel. But when you get into a mix, a Big Muff disappears really quickly, especially if you got a four or five piece band. You will turn on a Big Muff and disappear in the mix, which is a sad, sad state of affairs. This has some of that Muff grindiness, but what's really cool is this tone knob will allow you to still stand out when you're doing that big muff sound. Watch what happens when I max out that tone knob. You can hear the treble in that. If I bring this back down here, And if I bring it all the way down. This just really lets you stand out, and especially for engaging some. Or flip it. That's not even with the tone taken all the way up, but you can hear the massive amount of difference that makes on your treble side of things kind of coming out in the mix. So that is the nice thing about the x door is having that full range of sweep on that tone knob, you really can make yourself stand out and bring yourself out of a mix where the tone knob on a muff, on a big muff, doesn't give you that much boost to your treble to really, really make you pull out of the mix in that same way. So I gotta say, I've always been a fan of the original X Pandora. This pedal's been with me for a lot, lot, lot of years, and I have used it on a ton of different things in my life. Honestly, though, with this new X Pandora, I have a feeling this one's going to get re retired to the shelf for a while. I, I think I can get all the sounds that I loved out of the original and so much more out of the new. And what I'm really excited about is talking to the guys at Expandora. They said you can order these with some extra uh, ops if you want to. So if you want to get some different versions to try out, like an OPO7, like I, I kind of want to order a few more just to swap them in and hear the difference. I think it'll be really interesting. I'd love to do that someday. Maybe do a little shootout. If you guys would be interested in me doing that, comment down below. I'll work with them. We'll get some different ones, try them out and see what the sounds do and, and what changes when you start doing that. Because I do think that that would be a very, very fascinating experience to see all the different tones that you can get out of this. Okay, what did you think? I mean, let's face it, the original sounds awesome. It, it is killer. The only real problem I've had with the original is A, the dip switches are on the inside. So if you wanna sit here and mess around with this, you gotta take the back cover off. And what I also find is taking the back cover off can also lead to more interference issues, problems. So you have to like take the back cover off, put it back on, seal it back up kind of a pain in the rear, especially if you're on the road or you want to change in between a song, you just didn't have that option. So it was great for a recording studio tool, not so great if you were on the road unless you're just willing to set it and forget it and leave it in one mode, which let's face it, one mode on this would be fine. It's a great, great killer fuzz or killer drive, but you really couldn't switch between the two. Now, the modern version, first of all, the just the dip switches being on the outside, that's a huge selling point to me, but to be fair to Expandora, the original, they did release some versions later on where they had the dip switches moved to the outside so in a couple of reissues that they did um, that worked fairly well. They even had like one where you could switch between uh, bass and guitar mode as well. So you could use it for a bass, although honestly, I've used this on a bass a million times, never had a problem with it. So I like it on a bass too. Um, but they, they have done some where the dip switches were on the outside. What I found fascinating is A, because they are trying out all sorts of different chips and testing their chips before they put them in here, 
you're getting the best of the best of chips. Where if you go buy an old X Pandora, you have no idea what chips are gonna be in here. They may sound magical and amazing. They may sound like duds. It's the same problem that I have with buying old vintage uh, fuzz faces and things. Some of them sound amazing and some of them are garbage. Like honestly, I have had some that have come through here that I really regret buying because they just don't sound that great compared to a modern one. Um, but I think with the testing methods and what they're doing with these pedals, they had a whole slew of these laid out um, on a pedal board at NAMM. Tons of different versions, different chipsets, and several of the same, you know, chipset like the standard one that you would get with the OP07. And I played through every single one that they had there, and the consistency across the board was fantastic. You could hear differences between the different chipsets, but the OP07s that they had, if you played an OP07 one, they all sounded consistent across there. And that's just a, a tribute to their quality and to them testing the, the op amps before they put them in to make sure that everything is going to be consistent across the board. So I love that, that they're doing such a good job with their design and their work. And honestly, the extra level, the extra gain that you get out of the new version, I think it's fantastic. Like I said, it takes a little dialing in to find the original tone because you got to pull things back from where you expect them to be. But on the back half of all these knobs is kind of where the original tones are set at. And then as you come forward, you're adding a whole new level, a whole new thickness, a whole new gain structure to it. So really it's like getting two pedals in one it's like having a vintage and then having a whole new even fuzzier fuzz at your at your fingertips so i'm just i'm absolutely blown away by this i cannot wait to experiment with other chipsets just to see how they sound i think it's going to be fascinating honestly uh just messing around with these to see what all we can do with this pedal um i am I'm so looking forward to it. Now, the other thing, and I'll throw up a little link to their website on here. Um, they had another pedal that was called the Forbidden Fuzz uh, that was sitting there on their boards, and they had they had voiced them toward more bassier um, response. And it's based on that uh, two switches engaged uh, on the original Expandora, and on this one, if we if we put both of these into the up mode, it's based on that. But it has more knobs to give you more control over the sound, and it's tameable, so you can bring it back down a little bit, or you can get it into even a gnarlier fuzz territory. That thing, I only got to play with it for about 10 minutes. It was so flippin' amazing. It was just absolutely killer. So uh, that one's in prototyping. They're getting ready to start selling those out now. Um, really wished I could have walked out of there with that one too, but they need to keep it there to show everybody. But um, I am, I'm so excited to see what's gonna come from them soon. I think we're gonna see some really, really amazing things coming out of there. So make sure you go check out expandora.net. They've got some killer pieces coming out. And, and seriously, for the money, I genuinely do believe this is one of the best fuzz pedals that you can buy. Go grab yourself one, try some different chipsets out, give it a go. You're gonna love the Expandora. It's it's just absolutely awesome. And if you got an old one around, I urge you, dig it out. A lot of us forgot about this because it's been around for so long. And yeah, it's got a round shape. It's a little weird, it's a little strange. But uh, if, you, if you haven't played one in a while and you do have one, please go dig it out. I urge you, I really think you'll be amazed to hear how good they sound on their own and with other pedals. They're just, just a killer, killer fuzz. Well, as always, I'd like to thank my friends over at Palin Music. I am going to be planting some thoughts in their head about maybe picking these up because I really, really do think they are amazing. So I'm going to share that with them as well. Hopefully we can convince them to pick these up in the future because I think it'd be really fun to have some special uh, op amp chips, maybe something fun that was a Palin exclusive thing. We'll see what we can design up and, and maybe put out there in the future. But in the meantime, just reach out to expandora.net. They will hook you up. Really, really awesome team over there. I think you're going to love them when you when you reach out and talk to them. So give them a shout. Um, and in always as always, check out my friends over at Palin Music. I'll put a little link to them down here as well. Um, uh, they have been absolutely fantastic, and I know there's a lot of really cool things in the work for this year, so you're going to see some new stuff popping up on the website uh, each and every week. So please, please, please go check them out. And if you get a chance, go visit them in store too. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's not on their website now. They have uh, kind of separated the store inventories out from the website. So when you go on Palin.com, all you're seeing is the stuff they're selling on the website. If you go into the stores, there's actually gonna be a completely different selection of guitars in store. Um, visit them on Facebook and Instagram. Each one of the stores has their own link and they're gonna be posting up stuff that they have for sale and the stuff that they've gotten in uh, when they get new arrivals in. So be sure to follow them on social media on Instagram and Facebook because uh, they're gonna be posting a lot of stuff now coming out of those stores. So that'll kind of help you know what's in stock at, the, at your local store. 
And if you get a chance, please go follow me over on Instagram. I'm going to be doing more experiments with this, throwing some more demos up on this. When I get some new chips for this, I'm going to be swapping those in and throwing some of the results up on Instagram. So please hop over there, give me a follow and take a look at it over the next couple of months as uh, I start to experiment with this a little bit more. Well, next week we are going to be taking a look at the new B-Tronics. This thing is an absolute beast. So uh, I'll be doing a little deep dive on that next week. And then the following week, we will be revealing the Cower Grip. Well, I'm going to call it the Cower Geode. It's actually called the Grippin, but uh, uh, Doug's son, Max, named it the Geode. So I'm going to call mine the Geode. But Doug did a very special uh, version of it for me that is based on one of my favorite characters, the Mandalorian. Um, it is based on his ship, the Razor Crest. So for those of you who are Star Wars nerds, you're going to absolutely love this like I did. For those who aren't, you're still going to love it, but you're going to love it for a different reason. So join me in a couple weeks and we'll take a look at that and, and see how it sounds. Well, thank you so much for coming out this week, everyone. Take care, have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next week.